Red Beard was the first British tactical nuclear weapon. It was carried by the English Electric Canberra and the V Bombers of the Royal Air Force, and by the Blackburn Buccaneers, Sea Vixens and Supermarine Scimitars of the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm. Developed to operational requirement 1127, it entered service in 1962 and was withdrawn in 1971. Design Red Beard was an unboosted fission weapon that used a composite core. The composite core used both weapons grade plutonium and weapons grade uranium 235, and was intended to minimize the risk of predetonation that was a feature of all plutonium designs of that period with yields larger than 10 kilotons. An added benefit of the composite core was a more economical use of fissile material. The design was tested twice during the Operation Buffalo series of nuclear trials at Maralinga in Australia, first on September 27 and again on October 22, 1956. Although the design concept of Red Beard was similar to that of the Blue Danube warhead, an innovative means of implosion meant that its overall size could be significantly reduced. Its measurements were 3.66 meters in length, 0.71 meters in diameter and with a weight of approximately 1,750 pounds. Two versions were produced, the Mk-1, with a yield of 15 kilotons, and the Mk-2, with a yield of 25 carats. The Mk-2 was available in two variants, the number one used by high-altitude bombers, and the number two variant that was intended for low level delivery by the TOS bombing method, and its over the shoulder variant referred to as the low altitude bombing system. Red Beard's RAF and Royal Navy service designations were Bomb, Aircraft, HE 2000 pounds MCMK 1 number 1, Bomb, Aircraft, HE 2000 pounds MCMK 1 number 2, Bomb, Aircraft, HE 2000 pounds MCMK 2 number 1, Bomb, Aircraft, HE 2000 pounds MCMK 2 number 2, weighing in at approximately 1,750 pounds, Red Beard was considerably lighter than the official service designation, which was based on the original technical requirement. A significant improvement on Red Beard's predecessor, Blue Danube was in the provision of electrical power for the bomb firing mechanism and the radar altimeter fusing. Blue Danube had used 6-volt lead-acid batteries that were unreliable and had to be installed at the last minute before takeoff. There were also potential risks associated with stray electrical discharges to the firing mechanisms which might have led to accidental detonation. Red Beard used twin ram air turbines located in the nose, from which there could be no stray discharges before bomb release. The air inlet can be seen in the extreme nose. They exhausted through blowout patches in the nose sides. Until bomb release, the weapon drew electrical power from the aircraft for heating and preheating of the radar fuses. Like Blue Danube, the body diameter at 28 and was greater than was desirable relative to the overall length of 12 feet. To compensate for this stubbiness, and quickly stabilize the bomb after release, Red Beard was equipped with flip-out fins that were activated pneumatically, triggered by a lanyard attached to the aircraft. As with Blue Danube, the fusing arrangements were composed of twin radar fuses that were activated by a barometric gate after release. The barometric gate ensured that the radar fuses were switched on in the last few seconds of free fall to a computed burst height and this technique minimized the possibility of radar countermeasures disabling the radar fuses. There were backup contact and graze fuses to ensure bomb destruction in the event of a misfire. None of the variants were capable of being armed in flight in flight insertion of the fissile core. The core was inserted before takeoff in a process referred to as last-minute loading. For carrier-borne aircraft, Landing with the armed weapon was forbidden and the aircraft would instead be diverted to a shore base. Although the Royal Navy required its Sea Vixen aircraft to be type approved for Red Beard carriage as insurance against delays in buccaneer development, the Sea Vixen never deployed in the nuclear strike role. Early models were subject to severe environmental limitations, especially when loaded into Royal Navy scimitars on exposed aircraft carrier decks in northern waters. The Mk-2 variants were better engineered to withstand extreme conditions, and other than the yield difference, this was the main area of difference. When the bomb was delivered by low-level toss bombing, 
the aircraft was almost always at a lower altitude than the burst height. So in effect, the bomb was not really dropped, but was released and flew upwards in a ballistic trajectory, to detonate when it reached the required altitude. Service, RAF stocks of Red Beard for the Canberra and B bomber forces totaled 110. Of these, 48 were stockpiled in Cyprus to meet the UK's commitments to CENTO, 48 were stockpiled in Singapore to meet commitments to SEATO, and the remainder were located in the UK. Royal Navy stocks are believed, from archived declassified documents, to total 35 weapons to be shared between five aircraft carriers and shore-based supply and overhaul infrastructure. The carriers were thought to each have an air-conditioned storage capacity for five Red Beard weapons. Before the Red Beard codename was issued in 1952, it was frequently referred to in official documents as the Javelin Bomb, because it was originally conceived as a weapon for the thin-wing Javelin Bomber, a projected derivative of the Gloucester Javelin All-Weather Fighter. The designation target marker bomb was a euphemism used to disguise the nature of the bomb so that its dimensions and weights etc. could be circulated to aircraft and aircraft equipment designers without compromising security. It was replaced by the WE-177 in the early 1970s. John Dolphin, while he was working as engineer-in-chief at the Atomic Weapons Research Establishment John Dolphin worked on the Red Beard trigger mechanism and in 1959 requested a financial award for his work on the weapon, but was turned down. His claim was that although it was not his job to do so, he invented the device that eventually became the trigger for the bomb but the claim was refused on the grounds that it was within the scope of his duties. See also, Rainbow Codes. References. External links, photo of Red Beard, Red Beard, video of Red Beard detonation during 1956 proof tests at Maralinga, photos of British nuclear tests, includes Red Beard.